Coming up this week on the Digital Lifestyle Show 882, Gary Richard here, and it's our final show of the year, our Christmas special. Uh, we've got lots of news to bring you. Uh, we've got some smart home news. Gary's got loads of stuff on that for us. Uh, we've got some Windows build news. Um, I've got the synthesizer I want to talk about. And we have got a short Christmas quiz as well. So all that to fit into the next hour. So let's get straight to Richard and Gary. Richard, good evening. Good evening. And I'm being festive with my yeah. Christmas jumper on. I have one of those as well, except it's still in its, pa- its packaging. So <laughs> yes, I'm, a bit, I'm getting a little bit warm. So at some point, you may see me disappear and they come back without this on. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's they are really. Well, well. It's it suddenly got warm in, in in the UK. This time last week, I think it would have been much appreciated. Now it's a case of, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all nice and warm again. Uh, so hopefully Gary will be joining us soon. Um, it is our Christmas edition, the last, the last show of the year, because we're going to take a break off between Christmas and New Year. Um, now, you, you were supposed to be away, weren't you? So, you, so it's a bonus episode, in fact, that we've got you here. Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah, I was supposed to be uh, uh, in Berlin having fun, but because of all the various uh, uh, bugs and illnesses going around in the UK at the moment, uh, I have opted to stay in Hove because it was all getting a bit too com- complicated. It's, it's when things just start to stack up a bit. You think, you know what? It might yeah, be better to simply just stay here. And of course, one of the um, I wouldn't say benefits, but one of the side effects of the pandemic has been that uh, whenever I book anything now, I make very sure that I can cancel it at, at very short notice if I have to. So <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. No problem at all. But yes, I mean, I mean that has actually been one of the impacts where, where where everything I book now I can cancel if I have to because you just never know. You never know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you never know. Uh, well, we're glad to, to have you here tonight. So there isn't a huge amount of news as it's getting that time of year. Um, but we did get a bill last week, um, and um, I have got a brief quiz for us. Ah, oh, here's Gary. So let's let's get Gary in. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, Gary's looking very festive as well with his Christmas lights on there. Oh, it's very twinkly there. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to my new garden studio. <laughs> very nice. Yes. Yeah, uh, built built in four hours. That's impressive. <laughs> Blimey, did it more than five, four hours to put them lights up? <laughs> yeah, it actually did take me longer to put the lights up than it did to, to, yeah. to build the studio. <laughs> oh, very good. So, yeah, you know, you're settled in there, are you now? Not quite. Well, I'm getting settled in. I got I had the furniture yeah, yeah. that's got to turn up and got a little bit more electrics to put in. But uh, other than that, the actual s- fabric's working well and heating it is amazing. These lights are actually putting enough heat off to keep it warm. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> it just retains heat all the time. It's, I mean, it is super insulated. It's one of these sort of like passive house type insulation levels of insulation. But uh, you look at it from the outside and it looks like a garden shed. But you come inside and it's co- toasty and lovely. So it's, uh, it's good. Oh, that's excellent. Well, I was hoping to have some, uh, I was putting some racking up behind me over there and uh, it's been out for delivery since the 8th of December. So I don't think that's coming. <laughs> I don't know. With these with these strikes and things like that, I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so uh, the, uh, the racking on here is to put more synthesizers because, of course, I need that now because I've got the hey, Korg mod wave down there. Now, um, I'm not sure I can, how I, which I can de- demonstrate. I'll turn the noise suppression off, so I don't know whether you can hear that going through my speakers yep. behind me there. Oh, yep. no, that's what, that's that. what you can hear, yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's impressive. It's a, it's a it's an amazing keyboard. Um, I won't do too many audio demonstrations because it doesn't sound brilliantly through there. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed enjoyed playing with it. It's got. Um, this is the one that's a Raspberry Pi compute module is based off in here. And Excellent. the software, yeah, um, every parameter can be modified by another parameter. So, you know, you can take the filter and you can adjust the filter. You know, you can adjust the filter by uh, a, a, a modifier like a low frequency oscillator and you can adjust the speed of the off, off, oscillator by one of these other, you know, parameters. There's a touchpad on here. XY touchpad as well, which you can use to to modify it. But um, yeah, it's really impressive. It produces some very atmospheric sounds. Or you can, you and then you can modify all those through the here and each. So very very film type 
Um, it's, a, it's it's very BBC radiophonic workshop. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, I've got. Uh, that's not a bad thing, by the way. That, that's no, no. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I mean, th there are some things I've programmed that you may recognise. I can't hear that at all now. That's uh, yeah. That's the Stranger Things theme. Oh yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've done some like tangerine dream type sequences. A very complex stuff, but um, it, it is amazing, and there's so much you can do with it. It's one of those compared to some of my same my analog synth, which is very basic set of parameters, familiar. You know that you know you, you could translate that from one manufacturer to another. This is well, a whole other world. Mean, you know, my challenge remains. Uh, I'm look, looking for Sega's Outrun, the medical sound shower, uh, or maybe Passing Breeze. One of those two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I have to say as well, the core actual software that goes with it, um, which is on the laptop over here, the, their editor software is really good. It's using the USB networking interface. So it's USB to the from the, from the PC to the to the keyboard. And it's using the NDS um, networking communication that's built into Windows 10 and 11. If you were on Windows 8, you have to use RMDS or something like that, an older driver anyway. But it but it means the editor itself, as the, the sort of the core of this synth, these modification of parameters and things, every single thing that you see that has been going through there is reflected on the on screen editor tool and you can see every parameter affecting the things on there because it's real time so it's not just like a synth librarian where you can get the sounds and manage them like that. it's real time so everything can be done from the keyboard but if you've got the software on as well it just gives you that extra visual of what's going on so uh, Korg have done a great job it was developed uh, in Korg's R&D center in the states I think so um, yeah brilliant really enjoying it it's going to take me a long time to master it or at least get anywhere that um <laughs> anywhere with it that audio but uh, you know it, w the great thing is when you get something new like this is you just get sucked into playing with these things and you come up with new ideas all the time so we're enjoying that i, I did a video of how to update the firmware and in fact to underline its roots to being a raspberry pi the the, the firmware update if you use the firmware update tool um which i used it works fine it just works out of the box but apparently if you have an issue or if you want to do it old school you have to download the raspberry pi firmware updater in windows 10 and windows, oh, and then you can update it that way as well if you want so if you can't do it over the network usb network you can do it the old school sort of firmware but just exactly how you'd update a, uh, a, but it's actually you need the raspberry pi driver on there so it'll give you a clue of, of its origins um, but anyway it's great really enjoyed it so lots to do with that so that's something to do over keep me busy busy over christmas uh yeah and check out the video as well i've got on, on that but uh, i've been watching other people's videos on the sound design and yeah it gets um gary might remember the uh ppg wave do you remember the ppg oh, wave yes. It, uh, yes. yeah. uh, a wave table synthesis from the early 80s used by tangerine dream and thomas dolby and and, and others um you can do all those kind of PPG wave type effects in there. So I've been playing with that as well. So yeah, lots of, lots of fun on that to be, to be had. Um, so that's my, uh, yeah, that's my Christmas uh, taken care of. <laughs> I'm not sure what the rest of the family want to do, but uh, I'll be here <laughs> with that. In fact, uh, I might begin, I might get a shed like Gary's because that looks, looks nice and cozy. I'll be like, making a nice little studio in there, Gary. I would, yeah. Well, well I, I described this as the garden studio. So it, yeah, it, yes. It, it's long and thin, but it works. The acoustics are good to hear, actually. Not, yeah. not much echo at all. So it's the, uh, yeah, it's, I think that's partly due to the, the amount of insulation behind the walls buffering everything. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I mean, I mean, I can't recommend if you've got the space having a shed you could, you know, in, in a garden, you can decamp into is glorious. It's a, it's a real luxury <laughs> if you've got the space. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm quite lucky. I've got this room, which is uh, is my playroom, which I'm quite happy in. But yeah, if, I think through, especially through uh, working from home, you've got to have a space, a separated space, I think. Otherwise, it is it is quite tough. And it was during yeah. the certainly during you know I, I felt for people with with young families trying to work in their living rooms during the pandemic. That was hard work. 
Absolutely, you're doing homeschooling. But uh, Gary, I'm curious. So, it, it, is your shed fully off grid? Sorry, your shed is your outdoor workspace uh, fully off grid and solar powered, or are you running from the house? At the moment, I'm running from the house, but the, the future plan is to try and solar, well, at least solar power the house and then to redirect some of that here. Um, but to be honest, I'm not, other than powering laptops and things, I'm, I'm using very little power in here at all because of, because of the level of insulation. I mean, that was the critical thing. That's always the critical thing to get right first. If you get your insulation right, then actually heating, um, which is obviously one of your bigger costs normally, especially this time of year. Um, I mean, I was out here in that minus three degrees the other morning and I was able to warm the whole place up with, with a single bar on the halogen uh, heater to the point where it was too hot and I had to, had to turn it off and then it just retained the heat all day um, and that's that's the beauty of, of, of getting getting the insulation right but so I reckon a few solar panels will, will, will be able to sort it out um, there's there's planning regulation issues with having solar panel on, on the roof of this just at the moment so I'm, gonna, I'm looking at other ways of doing it but so uh, yeah it's uh, it, it's good, uh, I think, um, and definitely, I mean, one other, other option I have thought about is putting a battery in here because that would make a lot of sense um, to, to take the power overnight on cheap rate and just use it in here because I wouldn't use that much. A small couple of kilowatt hour battery that would actually definitely power the house, power the, build, the this building for all day um, for my usage of it. I mean, there was interesting the other week we had a power cut and I was actually able to use my car to power everything I needed in the, in the house for a whole day um, without using much power off the car at all. I think it, the car went down about 20 miles in range <laughs> for the day's <laughs> use of the power for the, for, for the uh, thing. So, so definitely, I mean, that's one option I have, have thought about. Um, might be a bit overkill for in here, to be honest. The amount of use of power I'm using is not a huge amount. It's more than covered by my investment in Ripple, the uh, the, the uh, wind farm I spoke about before. Mm. And, uh, um, so yeah, it's 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 good. I mean, it's, it was in, interesting, really, think, thinking about the automation in here and how how I handle things like heating and that. Do do I actually automate it so it actually triggers at a certain point? Because I'm finding it's actually really comfortable at a lower temperature than I would expect it to be comfortable at. Um, and I think part of that is because I'm using infrared heating because that tends to I mean you, you tend to feel like you, the walls start getting warm and they radiate back and uh, it's not like you have to the air might be the air temperature is colder but you actually feel warm um, which is interesting um, it's a bit like a sunshine on a winter's day where you actually still feel quite warm um, so so I've, I've actually felt I'm normally in the house I've sort of been 18, 18 degrees is is my minimal comfort time but I was actually able to have have it have it running at, well as I said I felt really too hot the other day and it was actually showing on the thermostat as 12, 12 degrees so and that felt really warm so and something something definitely something to be said for this infrared heating that's uh, that's quite well um, oh, what are you doing for networking have, have you uh, using wireless or have you run cable I'm, so i am actually at the, at the moment i'm using wireless and using wireless very effectively i have to say i'm, I'm on you i'm using wi-fi 6 um so i've got i've got a deco mesh i think i've mentioned my tp link deco mesh mesh i've used before um and i've, I've just upgraded that slightly to use the wi-fi 6 version of it and the signal well you can see it's it's good yeah. good enough in here for for H, hd streaming and it's actually i've been streaming 4k, 4K today quite ha happily out here on it um and obviously i haven't got a lot connected up in this room so it's it's laptop and, a, and alexa device basically um but um it's it's it, i'm getting 200 up and 200 down on that wi-fi um yeah. no, no problems at all um so yeah perfectly acceptable and, and that's and it's using the mesh quite effectively because um at the moment it's plugged into a different point to where i actually want to finally plug it in because i haven't got all my sockets i'm going to have behind me plugged wired in yet so eventually it'll be behind me here which will then be quite close be closer to where the main deco is um but at the moment it's rooted itself on one of the other decos and up up to another deco and then across to another deco and, and down and down but that's that's working absolutely fine and, and give me what i need um i've also put two new security cameras outside which i'm really impressed with i think i mentioned i, I mentioned them or not but these foscam spotlight cameras which are very like they look very like the ring spotlight cameras but obviously they're they're not proprietary um, they do have their own proprietary cloud service if you want to use it, but they are, you can use them with, with OnViv, so you can use them with any of the, 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 the sort of NVR type software like Blue Iris, which is what I use. You just plug them in, um, and, and they they've worked really well. They're, I mean, they are outside light replacements, so I use them as my outside lights as well. What I'm really impressed with is the intelligent detection on them. Um, so uh, basically, I've got this row of stepping stones out to, out to the office, and I step on the first one. 
and it recognizes the fact that um, it's a person on that that stone and turns the light on. Um, so you just pause about a second and it actually recognizes that. But it doesn't trigger for cats and foxes. Cause <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So the lights lights are not coming on all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got I've got I'm still detecting the foxes in that because the camera still sees them in through the infrared, but but it's not turning the lights on. And the lights are really good. They they give me more than enough illumination to get backwards and forwards from the office. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it it works really well. So I've, I've put two of those up, um, got them wired in properly. Um, but yeah, they, they, I mean, and the great thing about those is that they're just mains powered, so you don't have to, have to sort of try and work out how you're going to get a waterproof and adapter or anything like that to get them to work out. So I just, they just literally replace an, an external light fitting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What really also really impressed me with those was they actually came with a, a connector and a and a three pin plug, so you could set it up inside before you had to take it outside and put it on the wall right that's good yeah it, it gives you a bit of opportunity to set them up properly with the software yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and probably using where you go proper where you go connectors so they, they're totally legal connections are actually using for, for the electrician proof of them in fact he stole my cable afterwards because he really <laughs> really liked the cable so um i thought it was going to be very useful so yeah yeah really good idea um and, and they were really easy to set up as well one trick if you do have, actually ever buy a fos cam trip camera by default, they're not enabled for OnViv, so they're not enabled for discovery by third-party NVRs. So you have to set them up in their app first, and then go in and turn on the OnViv, and then they're easily discoverable then in, in the other things. But yeah, very nice, really good quality as well. Very impressive. Thanks. Um, so that's, so that's, that's been that's been one of the things on this. Um, I'm, I'm I'm trying to I'm playing with all sorts of bits of tech tech in here just to try and sort of out. I mean, I think I've shown this before, but this is a little Shelly, Shelly Wi-Fi temperature and humidity detector. That's Wi-Fi based. Um, that's actually an ESP86, I think, in there um, and under the skin. But but it's I've, I've had one of these running in the girls' bedroom and it's that's now been run for two years without changing battery on it. So they last a long time. Um, I actually, actually, I switched my, my sw the batteries on the switch bot in the greenhouse. Uh, I did it about two weeks ago and that was yeah. the first time i changed them i think or second time really since good, i fitted them yeah mm. i've got one of those switch pops home temperature occasions i think I, I installed it roughly the same time as you have i've obviously not checked it as many times as you have because it's, 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 it's still going strong um but i like i quite like these these uh shelly ones because they actually integrate really well into the smart things world and act as triggers and all that sort of stuff mm. so um but uh yeah, I was, I was, I was, I've been actually actually coming up with some better home automation stuff recently. I think actually real natural usage things. So, mm. for example, uh, in our spare bedroom, um, we've got we've had a bit of shuffle around. So we've now got bedside light, which we never had before. Um, so now, if you turn the bedside light on and you've got the main light on, it will turn the main light off because you don't need the main light on. Mm. You turn the, the, the bedside light on. And, and things like things like that, which I think are just natural things and mm. to, to do. And, and, and we've always had had this sort of the infrared, but at, at a certain level. So if you get out of bed, it turns it, it triggers the infrared and puts the light on low level. Um, but once you drop below that light, it turns the light off automatically for you. So it's, it's, it's sort of when you're sleeping, you're not going to turn it on. But if as soon as, you, as soon as you sit up in bed, you, you'll turn it on, which is quite quite a nice nice feature as well. Um, Again, that's done with a little sensor, sensor and that one's actually a, a Xiaomi um, Zigbee sensor, um, which which works really well. Zigbee stuff's getting particularly cheap at the moment. Um, I mean, Zigbee's always been pretty pretty expensive, but because because matter's coming in um, and that's going to replace Zigbee, I think a lot of Zigbee manufacturers are trying to sell their stock off at lower cost. And certainly over Black Friday, there were some really good bargains to be had on on Zigbee tech. Um, I've got some very nice um, Zigbee plugs, which which work exceptionally well, um, and and they were no, normally sort of 40, 50 quid, and I've got them for uh, about 20 quid. So I have one man sitting on oh, yeah, this this one sitting here right here. Let's let me show you. And so these these are um, Woolly W O O L E L E Y Zigbee plugs, and and they're then less than 20 quid, um, and so easy to set up and. and what I really like about them though is the size because you can see they're round, but they're they're so they don't block a plug socket. Ah, I've got some of them, um, not that tight, but look probably the yeah. same. Yeah, so, same, same thing. Same, yeah, 
Yeah, the Wi-Fi, because they, they, yeah. they do a Wi-Fi version as well. Yeah, I think um, down there But they, somewhere, yeah. they're really good because they just don't block the sockets. So you can put adapters mm. in, you can put whatever you want in, and, and you're not going to have, have sort of two sockets being used at the same time. Mm. I just dropped off, knocked off inside my desk. There we go. Um, so, yeah, so, so that they, and they're working really well as well. So and, and paired those up and they're, they're controlling all the Christmas lights everywhere. So it's, it's, it's but what I'm really impressed with this is I, I have got a Zigbee hub in here as well, but I didn't actually initially have it in here. And I was just triggering on and off switches without thinking the fact I didn't actually have the hub in here. So somehow Zigbee was actually working from the hub, which is the other side of my house, all the way to here. Um, and, I, I look, and I sort of looked into it, and, it, and one of the great things about Zigbee's, is, well, but about these, is they act as repeaters. So the fact I'd actually got one of these plugged in on the Christmas tree inside the house, which is quite close to here, was it acting as a repeater to here to actually work. Uh, yeah. So, so without even having to set anything up, it just worked. So mm. yeah, yeah it's, it's good. I mean, the problem with Zigbee is not really a standard, um, as I mentioned before. The, the, you every you can have lots of proprietary controls on Zigbee, but there has been a there is a Zigbee H home automation standard which came in fairly a couple of years back, which which handles lighting and switches for lighting, and most things, most switches and lighting now obey that, and you can pair them together and actually work work together. So that is that's got a lot of less of an issue. Um, the other thing which seems to be a lot less of an issue than I thought it was going to be is this whole smart thing switch off of the uh, the um. They, they switch off of their old style um, programming language and the groovy stuff and the, 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 these new edge drivers because there's some very clever people in the Zigbee community who are who are porting most of the contentious uh, drivers to this edge version and the edge drivers just work so well because they're all local um, they don't go up to the cloud and come back so everything's responding really quickly um, and I, I'm I'm amazed how quickly the click quickly. I, I can switch things on and off now um, fast, faster than anything I've ever used before. Um, certainly faster than the 4.3 megahertz infrared I was using before, which is one of the quickest things for turning things on and off. But obviously with Zigbee, you get feedback, so you know when things are on and when they're off. Which yeah. is good. Better than Wi-Fi, I would say, as well. Don't get a lot. Some, the Wi-Fi you can get, sometimes get a lag on, depending on what else is going on on the Wi-Fi, whereas this is obviously yeah. independent of that. Yeah, I've, I've got with with all the Christmas stuff, there's there's smart plugs everywhere at the moment, and yeah. occasionally some do have a Wi-Fi issue. Um, but to be fair, even the one in the garage, you know, is is sometimes on the edge, but actually it's been okay. But I think Zigbee would be a bit more reliable. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, the, the, these have been working okay. The Twinkly ones have actually been the ones that have worked the best. So I think that they they're still on Wi-Fi, but uh, they seem to have the best. Um, yeah, best reception or whatever on them. No, they're, they're supposed to have a really good Wi-Fi um, area on those, which is mm -hmm. one of the one of the cost points of them because they're, obviously they're more expensive than, than most other Twinkie lights, mm -hmm. <laughs> such addressable lights. I, I, I've actually got some really cheap addressable lights. Um, I can't, I can't remember the name of them actually off the top of my head, but they they are fully addressable. Um, but it's not not quite as well. The software is not as well rounded as the uh, the twink, twinkly ones, mm. um, but but they're su su sufficiently cheaper to make it worthwhile. Uh, to, yeah, yeah. But the Wi-Fi on those is not so good. So I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember the make. I'll, I'll find it for you. Um, but they don't. I mean, they are, they are working well. They're doing entertainment. And, and uh, one the, the one thing I do like on them is their ability to follow music. They seem to be very responsive to music, even without the app running. So they've got a, a microphone actually built into, into their own sort of controller, um, which works. Popotan, P-O-P-O-T-A-N, <laughs> very Chinese make, but uh, but yeah, it worked, seemed to work. And to replace the old thirty-year-old lights, which decided to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. You've, uh, yeah, the, the good the good thing is that these are all low, low power ones, aren't they? Than your old ones, mm. so you'd be saving a bit of money from your old your old thirty-year-old ones. Mm. Um, I still, you know, like Clark Griswold stapling the lights on the outside of his house uh, yeah. on the National Lampoons. I always think that one is the outside lights. Well, yeah, it was certainly look nice and nice and uh, cozy in there. Anyway, and uh, have you have you thought about what kind of communication you use for when you're in there? To the rest of the house, are you using like Alexa drop-in or sort of anything? Yeah, like that's, that? that's kind of the plan. And also, 
um, sort of colour light lighting as well. So there, there is going to be a cup, uh, LED strip um, running or neon strip running in front of me. So if someone wants to attract my attention, they can flash that light. Um, yeah. I can just drop in because I'm often often in meetings for mm -hmm. work, so I don't want to be interrupted all the time. But yeah, and I'll be able to throw, throw a switch back to the house to say I'm in a meeting as well. So. Um, it's a shame that I mean there's some really nice services out there which allow you to sort of integrate to Teams to get your lights to work, which which, which would be great. Except for most of my clients lock down the Teams graph, so you can't actually get yeah. to them to, to do yeah. that. So yeah, or well, you could always just resolve to your bell, string in a bell. Yeah, <laughs> when yeah. You want a cup yeah, that, of tea. <laughs> Ring the bell yeah. in the house. I'm not sure how we'll go that would go down. <laughs> uh, I think I'm the one who have to make gets the ticket. Yeah, tea. I yeah. Think I just think so the bell will be there, will you? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll have a panel up somewhere which will just say tea. Or <laughs> well, maybe these lights behind me could be just programmed yeah. to say tea. Yeah, it, it, it's great having your own space, and I, I've been you know, trying different things with the, with the Alexas and the drop ins, but just being up the stairs, it's easy for someone just to knock on the door, so no one uses the Alexa to do the drop ins. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I've, I've had a few BBC influence, influence incidents where um, children have walked in on 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 their team schools, so uh, <laughs> so trying to avoid that. Yeah. Slightly more difficult them to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's really good. Well, it's good. To, it's always a nice nice to have a good place to to sit. Actually, I, I noticed that they changed a few things on the Alexa. I was going to ask you um, if you noticed they changed something on the Alexa show, which it's been really frustrating is that you know when you've got a timer on the on the Alexa show especially this is in the kitchen I use this so you know your egg timer whatever or yeah. your, your pastry timer 10 minutes they used to uh, it used to always show the timer on there so you could just glance over see that it was yeah. five minutes four minutes three minutes and then the alarm would go but the recent update has changed it so you can't see the timer you have to say show timer and then it shows you the timer but that's just really uh, that seems really pointless when you've got a screen on there that you've got to manually get it to show. And I looked in the yeah, settings and I, I can't I'm, see I'm, anything. I'm not keen on a lot of the changes though. I mean, that it's it's the move towards this this idea that you can you, you'll have little panels you can place it around. With, whether they actually get through around to finishing that now, they've got rid of most of the team who are working on it. I'm not quite sure. But the post like almost like post-it areas, and one of those mm. you could put up would be the timers, so you so mm. you could have that um, available, which is on the the bigger Echo show. Um, Right, which which and interesting, the bigger record show in the UK has just had the update to turn that into a, a proper fire TV as well. So you, you can have a sort of like a, a TV, fifteen inch TV effectively, which is an, an, an Amazon TV with the full fire TV built into it, uh, as well as being a, a, an Echo device um, with all the end of post its and everything. Mm. So, so it could and be the fact that mine's not one of the older ones that they they just not put that that technology mm, on there. Yeah, maybe. Um, I'll have to check. I'll have to check because I've got all the all generations of shows. So I'll I'll have a see. see yeah, what, what it's do. just it was so handy because you can just look <laughs> over, and because there is there is a timer on the cooker which most people in the house tend to use. But I like the using the Alex ones. But yeah. of course, when you can't just glance over, it makes it less user friendly. Well, um, but the, the the Amazon clocks are very cheap at the moment, which which have the countdown ring on them. If you really want mm. to see what's going on, yeah, maybe yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, we'll maybe it's a drive to make you buy one of those, but yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, now what else did we have? Oh yeah, I mentioned it was um, it's the wind down for Christmas and the holiday season, so there hasn't been a lot of build uh, news, but we did get a new build last week, two five two six seven. Um, anybody tried that one? Richard, have you tried that one? I've not. I've been too busy dealing with the fallout of the. Uh, the last patch Tuesday for Windows 10, which is a uh, cause. Oh, yes, what was problems. that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yes, it's, um, uh, yes, yeah, so we'll get on to the inside of build. But, yes, this is the, uh, there was a um, patch Tuesday, which I, I think we missed last week, is was relatively mm -hmm. kind of the end of support for, uh, I think, Windows 10, 21H1, and a whole bunch of other versions of Windows 10 around that time. So probably the last H1 version of Windows 10, I guess, because they're all 20, they're all H2s now, aren't they, I think, going forwards. Uh, so that patch went out and then pretty much immediately people began reporting blue screens with it with, uh, again, windows 10, hasten to add, not yeah. windows 11, windows 10. Uh, yeah. and it's, it's to do with, um, uh, it, it's something to do with, uh, HID paths.sys by the looks of it. And, uh, and, and for some people it's, it's just causing them, their, their machines to simply 
blue screen when um when when they start up, which it, it looks like it's a mismatch between um uh kind of file versions, which is causing the um, issues with the sig with the signature. Uh, but as I understand it, it's it's hit basically pretty much a load of Windows 10 clients, basically from anything from 20 from 20 H2, which is I think still supported because it's a long term release version, uh, right up to 22 H2. So um, uh, Microsoft very cheerfully put out a you know, warning saying, by the way, this is a last, this is the last um, big update. Uh, you know, after this December 13th update, these devices will not receive monthly security or quality updates. Uh, you know, because of, at that point, Windows 10 21H1 was was at the end. It was at, so. I think they will be because they managed to break <laughs> yeah. a load. So, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it's that's perhaps I'd say the main Windows user. If you are if 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 you have done the Patch Tuesday install and you're having pro problems, there's a lot of support on the on Microsoft on Microsoft side on what you can do. There's work around uh, to actually make it work, uh, and obviously you need to follow the instructions very very carefully if you are affected by blue screens after doing. The December thirteenth uh, security patch Tuesday update because it's uh, yeah it's it's some more problems but again yeah. there are so many versions of Windows ten out there now you can't really blame them for having issues because it must be I mean I don't know how they manage to keep to, to keep track of all the various versions yeah uh, but they do seem to have comprehensively uh, broken certain editions of or certain installations of Windows ten which is a shame. And a good way of going out for Windows 10 21H1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Finish, and, uh, finish as you began. <laughs> and, and there can't be that many, um, there, there can't be that many Windows decided on Windows 10, 20, that, you know, that particular build is going to be a very small section, isn't it? Most deciders are probably on 11 now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I think if, it, it, and, and unless you're, uh, an insider who's doing it professionally because you need access to the latest sort of builds of Windows 10 before they get rolled out to your to your company or company. I would think most most the, the vast majority of insiders will be on the on the latest sort of bleeding edge window Windows 11 by now. Uh, yeah, unless their hardware doesn't support them, of course. What is yes. the status with the with the, with the Windows Insider program and, and hardware compatibility of Windows 11? Is there still workarounds? Yes, there's still there's still ways you can do it. I think especially if you do it through the um, through the ISO, I haven't tried it for a while, but yeah, I think there are there are still ways of doing it. Although I think when I was trying it on virtual machines, it, it wouldn't let me do anything until I gave it the right virtual machine hardware, and even changing the registry settings. So uh, I think it's getting harder to do anyway. <laughs> um, and now with that latest build, you, they've, they've also made an, an ISO available of that, so you could grab one of those ISOs. But I think even if you get the ISO, it won't. It, you can't upgrade a, a, on a, unsupported hardware. Although, like I said, I've got it working on some old machines, but uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's getting difficult to do. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the new well, the new build that was out last week, but there was just more experiments with sharing with the with search bars. Was that a two five two five two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. <laughs> we mentioned this last week, didn't we? That they, they they love this this search testing, <laughs> uh, this search box. So um, yeah, you can see the two different styles of search box that you that you were likely to get. But um, I got the one at the bottom, which I think is the common one, um, and it's forever changing. Even on my my main machine, it's it's, it's forever changes. But you know, that that was it really. There was no other changes. Although if you're on an ARM device like you are. Um, you there is a known issue. Uh, you may experience a black screen when resuming from sleep or hibernate. The workaround is to press the power buttons a few times to wake the device up. So I think you, your uh, little um, machine's on that, isn't it? Yeah, I would say I've been having that regardless. Uh, that doesn't seem to be a Windows um, uh, inside a blog thing. I've been having that issue with my own device as well uh, the last week I've noticed and I don't run the inside the, the inside of builds on it so I have noticed I have been having occasional it just won't start up again and you have to hit the mm. power button to actually bring it back to life so I'm not sure if that's necessarily a specific Windows 11 insider issue uh, or if yeah. it's just to do with Windows 11 full stop but it's certainly it's now surpassed the clock issue as being my. This is quite strange. Why, why won't it start? Is that on, off, on, off, and then eventually hold down the down the, the power button and up it comes. So, hmm. there's a definitely finding a few rough edges as I'm progressing. Although, again, I still say that the, the dev kit is working very, very well. Yeah. Um, also, released so, last week. 
So that was the Dev Channel. Uh, uh, yeah. So that was the Dev, 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 Dev Channel. But I think that they've also done some. Is it on the beta as well? It is. Yeah, they did on the beta. Yeah, two builds again, and um, there wasn't much on it on this one either. The, although they are testing the search on it, believe it or not. <laughs> so the same thing that we just talked about, they're testing that as well on the Dev Channel, yeah. on the beta channel. So there you go. Mm. Be, get excited for the uh, for the um, for I, those I search just... boxes. I just can't get excited, 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 excited about that, especially the annoying pictures they're putting beside the search as well. You think just, I don't want a picture beside it. I don't care about a picture. I just want to type in text. Yes. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's getting yeah. quite annoying now. And, and, and again, yeah, I was excited about the, the VPN icon. I just cannot get excited about the search. I really can't. I mean, to be honest, I, I mean, I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to see more of the stuff that, that's currently in Power Toys being folded into into the, into yeah. the DS experience, particularly Power Toys Run, which is still my most favourite thing in Power Toys. Uh, so, but yeah, it's as you say that that same search thing has cropped up in the beta, so it's uh, almost as though it's the same basic code base. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's controlled, or maybe it's being controlled from some central place and rolled out to your to your, to your desktops. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> now, um, it is that time of year where we have our, as it's our Christmas edition. Now, we've done different quizzes in the past. And, um, I tried to stump you, Richard, with space questions and never seemed to get that far with it. So I'm, I'm not going that. Try and stump Gary on some old technology type things. Don't get very far on that either. So uh, Gary knows all those. So I'm going to go for something different tonight. Uh-oh. Now we talked. Uh -oh. AI, yeah, we talked. We talked AI a couple of weeks ago, uh, and AI song lyrics. So, what I've done is I've got some real song lyrics and some AI song lyrics, and oh, no. I, want, I want you to see and guess which is which. Now I've made it easier because I narrowed it down by a couple of genres. So, um, to make things easier, especially for our generation so i'm not going with anything too recent so i've, I've gone for, i've stuck to my comfort zone here so i've got some pet shop boys lyrics and some phil collins lyrics now um some are some are ai some are actual lyrics and uh, i've also got another bonus uh, lyric as well so um i'll read out the lyric and uh you can tell me whether you think it's ai or um or real so let's start the first one. So this is in the style of the Pet Shop Boys. And the lyrics are, let's not go home. We'll catch the late train. I've got enough money to pay all the way. When the postman calls, he'll deliver a letter. I've explained everything. It's better that way. Is that AI or the Pet Shop Boys? Sounds very Pet Shop Boys. But... I think it's Pet Shop Boys. I'd say Pet Shop Boys. I don't, I don't, I don't think AI knows about late trains. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's give you the next one. And then I'll tell you which. I've got a list of things I'm going to hit. the. I've got a list of things I need to buy. Going to hit the mall and see what catches my eye. I've got a pocket full of cash. I'm feel, feeling fine. Going to shop till the drop and then I'll do it again. Shopping, shopping. It's the only thing I love to do. Shopping, shopping. I just can't get enough of you. I'll never stop. I'll never tire. Shopping, shopping. I'll do it all day and do it all night. That sounds like you in the cork store. I'm going to say AI. Sounded like a... Uh, 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 Richard uh, at NASA. <laughs> yes, it's in the, you know what, in the NASA store. Yeah, it, it, it definitely was because I actually, I actually got a, a an annual pass to Kennedy Space Center because it had ten percent off, and I spent so much money mm. in the NASA space store that I can't manage to make the pass pay for itself. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. and anyway, I'm going like, AI on that one as well. I think. So, so you, so what? So the first one you, you were saying what? Pet shop boys. First one I think is real. Boys. Yeah. Second one. I think it's AI. Um, and, and I'm going to say because because it's the references to the mall. I think that sounds quite American. Yeah, it does. Well, you're quite yes. correct. You're both correct. The first one was uh, from Two Divided by Zero, um, from Please, 1985, and the yeah, second that's a great one was song, actually. Yes, I, I should I should have known that. Okay. Yeah, 
uh, which is one of my favourite ones, actually. Yep. And that first one was generated this morning through through uh, <laughs> through OpenAI. But yeah, interesting. I, I told it to write. I, I said, give me a uh, write a Pet Shop Boy lyric about shopping. So that's where the shopping came in. Okay, I'll try another one now. So this is in the style of Phil Collins. I'm going. I'm going recent artist, obviously. Here, as you can tell. <laughs> um. I woke up feeling lonely today, wondering where all my friends had gone. I thought I had it all together, but now I'm standing here alone. I can't seem to find a way. I'm lost in the dark. Can't find the light. I'm trying to keep trying to find my way, but it's hard when you're lost at night. And then the mm. second one. Find a way to my heart. I'll always be with you. From wherever you are, I'll be waiting. I'll keep a place in my heart. You will see it shining through. So find a way to my heart. And when I, I will follow you. So there you go. Two lyrics. That's easy. Really easy. Yeah. Uh, first one's definitely AI. Second one. I, I'm OK. I am very old, but I think that song's actually called Find a Way to My Heart, isn't it? <laughs> Is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very ashamed yeah. that, I, that I know that. It's like, oh, oh I know this one. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I wouldn't even call myself a Phil Collins fan, but thought, I know this song. I've heard it before. Yes. You, you're quite I think, I think, I think for, he, he's trying to fool us, though, because there was a lot, There was a song called Lost in the Dark, which Phil, Phil Collins did as well as a cover version at one point. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's not the uh, lyrics to it. <laughs> no. Uh, and that one, that first one, the first one I just said, write a Phil Collins uh, love song, and, and that, there were the lyrics. So interesting, though, um, because they are close enough to give you the right idea, but there's something not quite right about them, isn't it? Like you said about the shopping bit, yeah. <laughs> There's a bit uncanny valley about them. It's just, yes. you know, they're the same thing as AI generated people. It's just not quite there, not quite right. There's something about the turn of phrase. Yeah, maybe. Although that said, with the film, if if it hadn't, if you hadn't mentioned the lyric "Find a way to my heart," I think I could have got that one wrong. I, I don't know because I, maybe it's. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, yes, it's yeah. almost. Yeah, it's right. it, it, it does sound a little bit uncan- uncanny valley once you know. But I thought, yeah, I, 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 I well, it's closer. So, I mean, I think I think it was a little bit unfair, but because of, I knew both both lyrics, both the proper lyrics there, so, so <laughs> I, I guess that made. But then again, you could have given us both two pop, lots of yeah. proper lyrics, so that that, yeah. that would have been a problem. But the, what got me on that, the Phil Collins particularly on on that first one was the rhythm was wrong. It wasn't uh, the beat wasn't right for a Phil Collins drum beat. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. The um, that's what I noticed is it, and the same with the Pet Shop Boys one. It didn't scan as well. Yeah, uh, neither of them scanned as well. Yeah. Now I've got another l- lyric that is AI, but um, see, I'm gonna I'll, I'll read it out, and you can tell me what I asked um, the <laughs> AI to to choose. I wake up, turn my computer login. There you are. My life is easier because of you, Microsoft. You've taken me far. Microsoft, you make my day. You help me work and play. I can't imagine life without you, Microsoft. You're here to stay. I click and type, you're by my side. I can do anything with your help from Word to Excel. You've got it all, Microsoft. You stand tall. Microsoft, you're here to make my day. You help me work and play. I can't imagine life without you, Microsoft. You're here to stay. And you're even wearing the, and you're even wearing the yes. sweater as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On brand. I, I presume you said, write me a song for Windows fan, for Microsoft fanboys or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I put, write me a song about Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, did so you do it in the style of Genesis? Because that had a real like, Genesis feel to it. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't, but uh, I could have I, I done that, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, do, do, do Microsoft song in the style of Pink Floyd. So it still comes out. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it, it, yeah, Genesis, Pink Floyd, it's, it's yeah. that sort of... <laughs> it it did. Uh, it, it's an endless source of amusement, though, that chat, uh, you know, I've got to admit, I was playing around with it today, and uh, yeah, yeah. I, it's a real fun with that, so, but there you go, so that was that was my little uh, love to Microsoft from uh, chat to AI. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> so maybe, like I said, but maybe in the next few week, uh, few years or whatever, we'll have our, um, we'll have our all AI, AI, we'll all be AI. I think the reason if if it can also create some music to to, to, to go to go with to go with those, those those lyrics as well, you kind of hear a a, a group of Phil Collins singing. And he, is that Phil Collins yeah. or is that? Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I wonder, I wonder how long that is before you can you can get the audio for it. Probably distressingly soon. Yeah, probably. I would think um, it's uh, it's going to be. Yeah, you can see that coming around the corner. I mean, they, they can they they can already do the voice if they have enough um, examples to work from. They, they can usually mm. recreate the D voice in a way that and you may not necessarily realise straight away, particularly if it's over music. Yeah, and I guess I mean the companies these film studios and things that just you know um yeah i heard some actors saying i think it was when he worked with disney that you basically give as part of your deal with disney to be in the film and you get paid for whatever is you hand over all the rights to everything you know you don't you, they own your face for that image and audio and everything so how long before you have to you know as an actor you perhaps sign up once and then they take some of your voice and a bit of motion capture and you know you're in future sequels uh, without with, without you actually being there at all i mean we've seen um you know like star wars doing some, some yeah. of that haven't we? with um was it grand moff tarkin yes peter cushing came back in road yeah. one although again you could see they hadn't quite got it right because you could see it was like oh okay that's definitely a you know a teacher character but they, they, you know do you think well that was five years ago now was for that Rogue One yeah. five years back and yeah you think, yeah they're getting better so yeah I, I, I can easily imagine that, that that you know there could well be uh a business case for doing sequels with cgi characters it just depends if how the audience are going to react yes it's still i think there's something still a bit strange about it, isn't it? and it's still not quite right like those lyrics really this it, it's almost there but it's not quite right enough to be to make it look strange um, but but as as these things get better, the, the, I'm sure they'll they'll improve and and that'll be the no that, that that'll be the case and uh, um, yeah I know that the, Gary you talked about the copyright implications and they you know around uh, intellectual property around these yeah. chap you know taking developers code and that kind of thing so it, it it's mm. a whole minefield isn't it that it's it's taking us it certainly is certainly is um, uh, and actually on a on a slightly serious note, because uh, we are talking about 80s music and stuff, I just want to also uh, just quickly pay tribute to Terry Hall, the special who oh, passed yes. away uh, today. Yeah. Uh, yes. Was announced today, which uh, uh, obviously uh, for me, Ghost Town was a particularly uh, influential song back in the early 80s. So yeah, very sad. But uh, um, you know, and and I kind of you, you, you kind of don't want to imagine that. That the, the voice would be recreated by AI or anything. You think, no, you know, it's it's kind of should be a snapshot in time. For for you know, I'm thinking obviously there's there's other, you know, very well known things like Leo, you know, like prints and things. You think we well, could recreate these things now, but you, uh, it was just the whole thing feels distasteful and yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and you see these Elvis shows, don't you? And you know this this. this I know that you get impersonators, but you also got the CGI type ones now, and yeah, it's, mm. it makes me think mm. of. Uh, uh, Blade Runner 2049 with Elvis in as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And, uh, uh, although it can be done very well. I mean, thinking about the Abba Void show, for example, which mm. w w which I've heard nothing but great things about. Uh, of course, that's all done with avatars on stage. So mm. uh, very, very clever. Uh, but yeah, it's a it it is a it's an interesting. It'll be an interesting ethical question going forwards, I guess. But uh, some of those lyrics, while we could spot them, and we did spot them quite easily. Yeah, you do wonder how much it, how long it's going to take for them to be indistinguishable from. Oh, look, you've discovered a new Prince track. Well, you've not. What you've discovered is the latest AI chatbot can spit out Prince lyrics now. Which yeah, would be very upsetting. Yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and and I mentioned. I don't know whether I should. I'll share my this um this right so this image here is for my plug uh, new single that's on spotify but that's the artwork that, that i mean all this is is obviously cgi so, so i'm just wondering what what video games did you because it, it, it does sound very familiar some of the yeah some of it's a lot of I've, I've listened to it and it's great uh but it there is a definite 80s sort of video synth vibe going on there and some of them so i'm just wondering what games you 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 you've you've based it on or not based it on but yeah been influenced by um i don't know actually the the, the race one um the second one which is which is it, it, there was some driving game and i can't rem exactly remember what it is that had that sort of intro it goes do 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 i wasn't sure it was checkered flag or um uh, pole some, position perhaps yeah pole position maybe yeah that's that's what stuck in my head on that one so 
um so that's where that came from and the, the other the other ones were just sort of getting that general 80s theme but the the, the artwork here that i've got on the, on the cover is um is what I, I got from the ai which i think i told it to synthwave racetrack and uh, i quite like that but that's the first one that came out actually and it kind of had the atmosphere that i was looking for so um yeah, so I was quite happy with that one. So in in the past, I would have had to sort of come up with some artwork myself, but t- two seconds on a on a AI photo generator, and I, I got got the artwork on there. Yeah, that's good too. It, is, it looks very evocative of that. You know, I mean, it, yeah, it fits in, it fits in very well with the style of the tracks. I think. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it was it was kind of I was just going for that sort of um, sort of eighties vibe, and uh, um, but it was that on the racetrack one it was that it was that intro start sound that kind of kind of got me on there mm-hmm. i was just thinking of uh, uh when you see a, a racing game watching gary driving a, a racing on a on a racing game uh, <laughs> when we're at ces <laughs> so that's definitely uncanny valley valley I, I just can't get used to the fact it's not real <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, that the uh, yeah Gary managed to crash the uh, the most spectacular crashes when we were on that. I can't remember that it was that was some. It wasn't a console, was it? It was it was some kind of simulator, wasn't it? Racing simulator. Yeah, some racing simulator. Yeah. Yeah, which now you could probably get on your that sort of level of technology on your phone, but then it was quite it was quite advanced. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, with that, is there anything else that you want to fit in before we close for the year? No, I, th- I think you know what I think. That's, it's been a very interesting year, isn't it? So yeah, it, I mean, it certainly has. Are yeah. we going to do a revisit of our predictions at the start of? Uh, oh yes, we'll do that on the first show um, next year. I wish uh, I had not reminded you of that. Yes, thank you, thank you for reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> I always enjoy going through that because I get to listen to the show, the first show from last year. So oh, I'll no. uh, I'll have listened to that. Um, I, I'm not. I can't even remember what we predicted. So. Um, as, entirely as, sensible usually but not exactly uh, i think as long as i didn't say i'll never ever ever buy an ev that's that's the key thing as <laughs> i don't think you said that i, I don't Good. know what you said about arm and windows but we'll, we'll find out <laughs> well now i'm running on one of it in fact i'm talk, talking to you on one at the moment so yes yeah we'll, yeah we'll see we'll see for that well i hope you have a great christmas so well the listeners have a great christmas too we really enjoyed spending the year with you and um so we'll be back on the well, the first week in january and uh, so until then have a great christmas everybody and we'll see you in the new year you do Cheerio. Cheerio.